Oh. Oh. Well, I'm glad I reviewed the original film, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, when I bought the 4K Master Blu-ray as a birthday gift. And yes, the transfer it is stunningly beautiful, it looks better than ever, better than all the previous releases. It almost looks like a brand new movie already. But, sad to say, like most movies these days, the main reason why it got released was because they serve it as a cash-in for the remake. And it seemed like every movie these days, whatever is a remake or a sequel, they're going to release a brand new Blu-ray or DVD or even a 4K Ultra HD just so people can get their tickets because sometimes they put in a free movie ticket inside to go see the sequel or remake that might turn out to be a disaster well that's certainly the case but I did actually finally saw the shitty remake of Pet Cemetery. yeah the 2019 version which had Jason Clark Amy Semes and even John Lithgow. Yes, John Lithgow, who's been best known for films like uh, Cliffhanger, which I can't believe they're going to do a remake of that. I don't know if that's true because I saw that stupid poster. Um, and I know he was in other films that I love, like, for example, uh, Harry and the Hendersons and Santa Claus the Movie. Yeah, I like that one. And, He's in a lot of thrillers, you know, like like uh, Raising Cain, Ricochet, Blowout, um, several others. And of course he was in the TV show Third Walk of the Sun, he had a comedy, as Judd Crandell. And which is sad because you just can't top the original actors like um, Dale McCliff, Denise Crosby, and Fred Gwynn. Hell, you can't even top uh, Nico Hughes. Now, I can probably sense a better actress to play uh, Ellie, but... Well, there is one. There's a decent actress. Um, and it's actually played by Jate uh, Lawrence, but sadly, even she started to get much worse at <laughs> the time... Uh, we get to the final twist. So what's really new about this remake? I mean, it has the same story, same plot, except they did some radical changes, none of which were on the Stephen King novel. So, what's the deal here? What's the whole point? Why did they do this? I think I can see why. The success of IT, the film adaptation based on Stephen King's novel, which was a huge hit. I mean, it was overrated, yes, and I didn't mind the movie, but I did have issues with that one too. And I know I still haven't reviewed that film yet, but maybe someday I will. And, uh, I, again, uh, I had too much time with my hands. I talked about this on my trailer reaction and I was not impressed at all because already we're getting that Child's Play remake and even I'm not going to be impressed with that either because <laughs> why do I care okay why do I need this they're just doing this for money that's that's what they're doing they don't care about the quality they care more about the quantity and and let's just cast like pretty bland actors to play the role and no one will know the difference and let's just throw some stupid jump scares and everything has to be grayscale filtering and let's have a score that has the same old bumping noises you know the the same boom 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 exactly tired of this shit, man. Tired of it. And what's even worse, 
critics are so fucking clueless that they have to give this film a pass. They even say, for one of the critics, they even say it's it's one of the best Stephen King adaptations. Yeah, my ass. I really didn't see that. In my opinion, the original is the best Stephen King adaptation we ever had. Despite of its issues, yeah. That's right, you can shit on the original, but you can give the remake a pass. It's not even scary. I didn't find anything scary. I just found it not only underwhelming, as some people may think, I just find it pointless. Unnecessary. I mean, I think underwhelming seems way too kind, but whatever. Might as well just be horrible, too. I'm pretty certain the writers and directors who did this, even the producers, they just can't get it right. They just don't seem to do any justice to the Stephen King novel, the way I saw it. I'm kind of amazed that Paramount didn't bother to do a 30th anniversary re-release, so that way they could play it in theaters with digital sound, a 4K remaster, and it'll look even better on the big screen, so people will have a chance to see it. But I guarantee you it's going to be Phantom Events. And I hate Phantom Events because they only play films on the weekend, and next thing you know, they're not going to play it anymore. But I think on a rare occasion, they did that with the Studio Ghibli films. You know, so they got repeated uh, again. But you'll still never have a chance, and plus you're going to spend more money on it. When you'd be better off just spending money on the Blu-ray, the DVD, or whatever. It's ridiculous. Stars Jason Clark from Terminator Genesis. Yeah, the, when he played uh, John Connor, he wasn't that good at all. A pretty bland actor. Amy Semes from The Killing, that's on a AMC. Uh, John Lithgow, Jate uh, Lawrence, uh, Hugo and Lucas uh, Laverde, Obsess uh, Ahmed, Alisa Book Levine, Susie Stingow, Marie Herrera, Jacob Lemire, Lou Ferrando, and Maverick Fourteen. Based on the Stephen King novel Pet Cemetery by screenwriter Jeff Bowler. Yes, it's produced by Lawrence D. Bonaventura, the same producer behind the Matrix trilogy, and he also worked on the Transformers movies. He even did Kidnap. And it's directed by two directors, Kevin Klush and Dennis. Uh, Weidmeyer. Well, part two <laughs> almost seems like I'm reviewing the, the same movie because that's what a remake is. You know, you're reviewing the same thing over and over again. The movie begins when we meet a doctor named Louis Creed, played by Jason Clark this time, not Dale McCliff. He's from Boston, Massachusetts, who moves to a small town called Lulo, Maine, with his wife, Rachel, played by Amy Semest, who is not, not Dennis Crosby. <laughs> and they moved in with two young children, Ellie and Gage. Yeah. Both played by Jadie Lawrence and Hugo and Lucas Love, which by the way they did use twins this time to play Gage. Child labor laws, I guess they bought that shit back. They also have um, Ellie's cat too to join in named Church. Which this time it's not a great cat that has glowing eyes. It's actually a different kind of cat. It has like uh, 
brownish fur and a mix of white. Now, well, anyway, while exploring the woods surrounding the new home, Ellie suddenly stumbles uh, across the funeral procession of children around wearing animal masks by taking a deceased dog to the cemetery. Yeah, because this is like part of a ritual that they were doing. Having all the kids wearing all the animal masks. Yeah, like this was not in, in the 1989 original. Yeah, what a change there. What a lousy change. Well, anyway, they're taking them to the pet cemetery as it's red. Judge Crandall not played by Fred Gwynn, but John Lifgow, which is their neighbor next door, actually warns Ellie and Rachel that the woods are very dangerous because something's going to happen. But meanwhile, at the University Hospital, Lewis is being left shaken after failing to save the life of Victor Pascal, this time playing by a black guy. Yes, who's uh, played by Obsess uh, Med. And instead of having the um, showing the, the brain with all the blood rushing out of his skull, it's actually his face. Wow. What a change there. <laughs> and I guess I have to switch for PC issues here. Yeah, everything has to be PC. There's never wrong with having a black guy or or any people with a different race though, but I'm just saying that that's your change here. But yes, uh, he was fatally injured after being run over by a car. It's not a truck this time, although maybe it didn't explain much. Or maybe I just explained it, whatever. But then there was a warning that um, Lewis had that came from Pascal, but it just seemed like it, it might have been just his imagination or something. Like, how did this happen? And that's why we have all these flashbacks here. But by the night of Pascal's death, Lewis suddenly experienced, yep, just like in the original, I'm, I know I keep comparing it, he had a vivid dream that he met Pascal that led them to what else? The pet cemetery. Warns them not to um, not to venture beyond, as as it referred to. And they felt felt like the ground is very sour. Then Lewis suddenly woke up. Yes, his feet is covered with dirt. You know, he dirtied up the bed sheets. You know, just puts it in the dirty clothes. I mean, he thought that the whole thing was a nightmare, but it looked like it wasn't. On Halloween, not Thanksgiving, we begin to find out that Church was killed by a truck because, you know, the Arango gas truck you know, goes by on the highway, like the original, once again, <laughs> also in the novel. So, Judd decided to take Lewis to the pet cemetery, supposedly to bury church, but that's what led to the ancient burial ground. They have a different mimic ground. So the next day, Lewis is being stunned when he found out that church returned back home alive, but he's beginning to notice how aggressive uh, he is. Starts scratching Ellie instead of scratching him. And instead of actually taking a a rat in the original film, um, it was actually a bird. Oh, yeah, some good changes there. <laughs> so Lewis suddenly confronts Judd, who tells him that the burial ground is behind the pet cemetery to be able to bring back fiends alive which has a spirit called the Rendigo. So after Church's attacks Gage, there's a new change. 
Lewis attempts to illuminize him, which at, at first he tries to kill him, but then he decided that he's going to leave him out straight into the the gate of an area with the restricted access before telling that Ellie had ran away because he wanted to pretend that this had to happen. Instead of a picnic, it's a birthday party, but this time it's for Ellie. And during the party, Ellie suddenly spots church. This is where tragedy sh strikes. And you're going to love this change. Instead of being gauged, because Apparently, Gage was about to walk uh, straight into the highway, and what do you know? Lewis actually spotted him and decided to, just in time, grab Gage uh, out of the highway. But little did he realize was that Ellie was actually at the highway too, trying to get uh, her cat, Church, who just followed around. Not knowingly that the truck, the gas truck, was about to pass by, and instead of um, Gage, it's Ellie that gets run over by the truck. And you're going to love this. Her death scene was quite different than Gage's death scene in the original, where this time it's the truck that not only tries to stop the brakes, but then suddenly, just when he did it, the gas, uh, part of the uh, the gas tank came right out of the truck and actually hits Ellie. I think the cat also ran away at that point. Yeah, and I know he, I know Church actually did. And it killed her. So Lewis as well as Rachel, they, they both found the Ellie as being pushed from the gas tank and went straight into um, the field. They found her, her body and that's when the following the day they had a funeral. Very shocked about the death of Ellie. So then Rachel Gage decided to spend a few days with Rachel's parents. Judd was insisting that Lewis was planning on trying to to bring Ellie back to life, but warns them that uh, sometimes dead is better. Yeah, we know that line. It's not said three times this time. <laughs> um, but despite of the warnings that both Judd and Pasco had told him, well, just like the original. Yeah, I, this is going to sound like a drinking game when I have to say that. Just like the original. Just like the original. <laughs> Take a couple of shots of that, you're going to be fucking drunk all day while watching this review. Unless you don't end up being dead. <sighs> well, speaking of drinking, yes, both Lewis and Judd were drinking. He actually did pour something inside Judge's drink so that way he could pass out and just avoid the warning so he can go all the way up to the cemetery to dig up with the shovel Ellie's coffin just to get the body out and just put him all the way up to the mimic uh, burial ground so she'll be revived. Because if it were for church I'm pretty certain it could work for for humans. And when she came back, well, she isn't exactly what she used to be. Then we have to go for stupid jump scares here and there. So when she came back, um, well, afterwards, um, Lewis suddenly uh, gives um, Ellie a, a bath. You can already tell by her face that she isn't exactly what she seems. So, he had trouble uh, combing her hair uh, by using a brush, and the hair was starting to get stuck out. And then you begin to see the stitches on the back of her head. 
then later, like around in the morning or afternoon, well, Ellie suddenly puts on um, her ballet dress and starts doing ballet dancing all the way around the room and then starts smashing things. You wouldn't believe it if I told you. And Lewis tells uh, Ellie to stop it. Now, uh, Rachel had actually tell Lewis, just like in the original, yes, I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> okay. Um, that, yes, she, she was very frightened about her sister. You guessed it, Zelda. Because she had spinal meningitis. And, um, you're going to love this. Instead of being inside her bedroom, it's which she did went to the bedroom too, just to feed her. It's actually the elevator shaft. Yes, so Rachel, as a little girl, decided to give um, Zelda some food through the elevator shaft. But then later, all of a sudden, she fell into the elevator shaft. And that's where we go for a jump scare. Like, wow, this is something new. But it just seems to go on and on and on. When Judd suddenly found out that Ellie is alive, and that's when he decided to uh, go after uh, Ellie, because it can get much worse. And then, what do you know, Ellie just attacks Judd. She wears uh, an animal mask cat mask to be exact or was it a rat I don't know um, now I'm gonna say it again just like the original well um, there's <laughs> you know the death scene with Judd in the original film where yes he does get stabbed with a scalpel the geisha took out and and just um, cut his heel and then later um, starts slashing his uh, mouth and dies just like that well this was done very differently this time where Ellie takes a knife a kitchen knife and just starts stabbing him yes yeah, stabbing Judd but he did slash to his heel with a bit of CGI blood in there. <sighs> Stupid, I know. And it could only get worse because now uh, this is where the ending starts to happen. Um, well, Rachel came back along with Gage, you know, from her parents. And then the Lewis was about to explain to um, Rachel that Ellie came back to life. So I'm hoping that you know Rachel will be able to be able to get to know her. But maybe she wasn't ready yet. So that's why Lewis was trying to explain to her. But little did we know, Ellie was ready to attack them. And yes, they were. First, um, she attacks uh, Rachel, and then, yeah, now, uh, before I get to this, um, going back to Judd, yes, uh, there's a scene in the movie where when she takes off her mask, you begin to see Norma, which is Judd's wife, and it's, yeah, so this is like, the use of CGI right there where it transforms from Ellie to Norma and just goes around attacking them. So anyway Ellie just starts to tell uh, Rachel just just when she was ready to attack uh, Rachel uh, just when Ellie was ready to attack her he's about to explain that about Zelda and everything and then 
then she starts stabbing her and killed she even hanged her and then suddenly Lewis starts to um, stop her and she's just going completely nuts and and then of course just when uh, Ellie was about to take um, Rachel already dead straight into the uh, burial ground she got uh, resurrected pretty quick though she actually stabbed Lewis just as uh, Lewis was ready to uh, stop Ellie and what did you know they're all dead but they came back to life only leaving uh, Gage inside the car which Lewis actually uh, left him in tell him not to open the door but it seemed like Gage probably did unlock the door for the family so they can get in already dead uh, oh. what a fucking unnecessary pointless remake that I have to see just like all of the other horror remakes we've been getting in recent years yeah the ones that are really really bad because Hollywood still continues with this shit no surprise there isn't even a single thing I liked about this movie it's like I get it man I know what was gonna happen it's all predictable and it just goes really fast so what's the deal here they took the same story from Stephen King and decided to do some radical changes with it let's just throw in some random kids uh, burying their dog at the pet cemetery wearing all their masks you know playing the drums because this is part of their their ritual to bury um, a pet. Uh, let's just um, switch genders this time. Instead of being Gage, it's Ellie getting run over by a truck. Let's go for a grayscale. Let's go for some editing, some cinematography that just looks so dark and pale and with filled with grayscale filtering, just to make it as dark as every other horror film in recent years. Um, let's go for some actors who can bring us some pretty bland acting hoping that they could be better than the previous actors which I'm sorry they don't work and you get uh, a legendary actor who's just there for a paycheck I mean yes Lithgow was pretty bored at times but then I don't know I mean you want to like him in the film, but it just seemed like he's he's just wasted. You probably don't see enough of Pascal. I mean, I really miss the old Pascal when he was more humorous and an actual angel. Yes, he he may be scary, but he's also uh, <laughs> he's also very kind at times, and it, it was like a warning here. I just never thought they'd make him so boring. Um, how about uh, Zelda? She's not even as scary as she was in the original. I swear to God, go back to, go back to that movie, and you can tell me how scary and creepy Zelda turned out to be when she had spinal meningitis, and she was actually played by a guy. That's how creepy it was with all that makeup. How about uh, Church the Cat? I mean, yes, I guess the only change here was that it still remains the same for for both movies, was that yes, they did actually use practical effects on the death of, of Church, but the cat remains the same. They didn't use any CGI effects to revive him. I'm so amazed they didn't do that, but they sure has had different types that they had to choose to play the role so they couldn't get the, the same great cat like we had in the original the eyes doesn't glow like it was supposed to I mean yes the cat does hiss and attacks and scratches 
Uh, and the way uh, Ellie acted when she was dead, she was just like any other kid I've seen in many horror films these days, especially when you have a child killer in, in movies, you know, going around yelling and screaming, pounding and and doing all these crazy shit. I, I mean, I am getting sick and tired of that. I really am tired of this, man. I'm tired of this movie. I'm tired of these remakes. I'm tired of talking about it. And I don't care if it makes tons of money. It doesn't matter. What sucks, it sucks. Yeah. Jason Clark, as usual, very bland actor. Amy Semes, I know she was good in The Killing, but I didn't care for her in this movie. John Lithgow is just wasted. I mean, he's probably the only good thing about it, but it was just, again, paycheck. Um, the actress, uh, Jate uh, Her Lawrence, is actually quite decent, uh, maybe for the first half of the film, before she became <laughs> dead and revived. You know, these directors and writers should be ashamed of themselves for taking a good story and turning it into a piece of shit. I can't believe it, man. Fuck this remake. Fuck it to hell. Because yes, sometimes the original is better. Just pick up the original film on Blu-ray. Or Ultra HD 4K, even DVD for that matter. I guarantee you, even the sequel is better than this. Yeah, which is a whole different story. <laughs> and not be the greatest, but even I'd rather watch that. Fuck this, man. And I'm getting sick and tired of jump scares, too. When is this shit ever gonna fucking end? Make a scary movie without jump scares, man. How hard is that? Or try to make jump scares done right. Instead of being fucking annoying. And make the pacing right. And stop it with this grayscale or any other kinds of color filtering like blue or, or black or, or fucking gray. And just make the movie look as shiny as ever. Make it more brighter. Okay, I don't care. I'm tired of this. I mean, Stephen King thought that he approved this, and, and if he did approve it, then he's got to be fucking nuts. Oh, and don't forget, the theme song sucked too. It was done by Starcrawler. I'm sorry. People may say that it was out of place with the original song by the by the Ramones, and I love the Ramones, and I love the song. I hate the cover version by Stark Crawler. It sounds as like a pretty bland indie rock type, and I and I do like indie rock, but I don't like this kind. Stay away from this remake. Stick to the original film. Guarantee you, even the sequel's better than this. Fuck this. So anyway, that's Pet Cemetery. I sure as hell don't want to be buried in a Pet Cemetery, and I don't want to live my life again with this shitty remake. Or having to hear this bland fucking theme song they chose. And I give the film zero stars. Yes, because sometimes dead is better, and, and it should be buried down there. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. I'll see you later, much later. Bye!